So first things first, we're going to set all our, all our settings at default and we'll go through basic four thread surging. Uh, this would be your starting point every time Every time you come back to your machine, if you don't remember what you were up to last, go back to a four thread surge, make sure it's doing that properly, and then readjust for um, the exercise you, you actually want to do moving forward. So um, when we start threading, we always say a little prayer. Um, it's best usually to thread your serger uh, from the center outward with your four threads and move from center outward to the right and then center outward to the left. So we're gonna start with our upper looper. Um, usually I find this is the easiest on this machine. It is the pink thread guides. Um, anytime you start surging, you wanna start with your presser foot in the up position so that your tension discs are open. So again, I'm gonna flip my serger cones on the back over And your serger cones are there to keep your serger cones, uh, serger spools from wobbling. A wobbly, a wobbly cone can often lead to super weird tension. So you'll go through your thread guides. They are numbered one, two, three, down through your tension, four. Um, I like threading with tweezers. It does make, does make threading a little bit easier. So down from four through five. Under six through seven. And then we're going to put this through the eye of the upper looper. Keeping a short, short tail on your thread. We'll make it easier to push that thread through the looper. Through the looper then we just want all of those threads going back back and under the foot so once we're threaded we're going to go under the foot and guide the thread out to the back our next thread is the blue which is the lower looper so the lower looper is the looper that goes below the stitch plate in the machine that's how i keep track lower upper does it go above the stitch plate when it moves or does it go below? So same thing with your lower looper, make sure your presser foot is up as you start to thread. One, two, and three are at the top of the machine. As you come down four down the front, you guide the thread into five. Under six and seven through eight. And then the magic part about threading uh, most newer sergers is that they have a release for the lower looper. Lots of old sergers, uh, you practically had to stand on your head and thread the back part of the thread guide on the lower looper from the left side of the machine. Now with the hand wheel in the right position, as indicated by this diagram here, and the little raised ridge on uh, the hand wheel, we're able to move the lower looper out using the lever nine. So our lever nine pulls to the left and moves that lower looper out into position. The threading of this thread guide is super easy at this point. We just need to tuck the thread in behind that little triangle flap. And 
At this point, I like to just push that looper back into position before I thread, thread the eye of the looper. Again, using tweezers, which comes standard with the machine. Brand new spooled thread and is a little bit fuzzy. This thread from your lower looper, as the stitch is formed, will actually loop up over top of your upper looper. So that's usually where I guide it before I get started stitching. It's sitting just over top of our upper looper there. Uh, one more thing of note in this, in this area here is your stitch finger. So on this machine, the stitch finger uh, is removable. Uh, for a four threads flat serge, you do need it installed. Um, we'll be doing some other exercises like rolled hems and blind hems. And in some of those other stitches, you do need to remove the stitch finger. It's super easy to remove. On the little tab here, it's a little bit, little bit textured. You'll pull out straight sideways and remove that. The stitch finger here helps the stitch to stay flat as it gives the thread more space as the stitch is being formed. When you slide it back in, it will slide in right in front of this little notch. And right back into place. It'll clip in with the yellow line aligned with the silver guide there. So that's the bottom portion of our machine threaded. Let's carry on and do the top. On the top of the machine, I'm going to start with the green thread, which is my right needle in this case. Again, sure your presser foot is up all the way. When you come down the front of the guide through the tension disc, we're coming across up and over, down for the right needle on the right side of the silver bar at the front of the machine. And usually I get both my needle threads to this point and then I thread my needles. Um, if they're different colors. Because at this point, the direction for our next thread guide is easier if we do left and then right. So yellow thread through the yellow thread guides. The bar here ensures those threads don't tangle with one another. Going behind the thread guide at the top of the needles. And then the 4234 does have an auto needle threader. It's a pretty slick little thing. It does need to be aligned in the same place for your hand wheel as your lower looper uh, release for threading the lower looper. So we'll be going through the thread guide here, up over the seven, and then cutting off on the side of the machine. To use the needle threader on the left needle, make sure the threader is engaged to the left side of the, of the slide. And press and grab. So it'll pull the loop of thread through the needle, saving you potentially hours of frustration if threading needles isn't your thing. I'd like to try that again from the other camera angle.
So it has pulled a loop of thread out of the back of the needle. If that's caught on the hook, gently release it and pull it out backwards. This thread as well, you do want going under the foot to thread the right needle. We'll push the switch to the right. And once again, put the thread behind the thread guide at the top of the needles and up through the guides through seven and then cut off on the side of the machine once more. Up through the thread guide. And the little hook on the needle threader will grab the thread for you. Once more, this thread can go out behind your presser foot. I like to leave nice long tails. Nice long tails of all four of those threads uh, before we start stitching. It'll help to ensure that our threads aren't tangling on the stitch plate. And anytime we do anything on our serger, you need to remember that your threads need to be going backwards. There is pins in your stitch plate, and if they break, uh, you will either need a new stitch plate or some repair work. Um, your stitches will not form properly if the stitches, if the pins in your stitch plate are broken or bent. So this stage, we're ready to close the door and install our trim trap. And start, uh, start making a chain um, to sew out. So you'll want to lower your presser foot and a couple Hand wheel turns towards you to make sure nothing's jamming right out of the gate. And then gently with your foot pedal, start making a chain. Starting every surge you do with that chain will help keep your fabric moving smoothly. And if you did miss thread or uh, had some trouble along the way, um, you know that it's going to work if that chain is being formed prior to adding fabric into the mix. So what does it look like when we add fabric? What parts of the stitch um, are what? So in a basic four thread serge, you'll want to find the default tension for your four thread serge on your serger. It may vary slightly from serger to serger, um, but generally, um, Generally, it'll be around the four mark on most brother sergers for your default tension in that four thread serge. So at this point, um, you can gently lift the front of the foot with your thumb to get fabric going underneath it, but the feed dogs come a long ways and you don't usually need to do that. So this is just a sample. I'm not worried about uh, how much I'm cutting off, but I'm going to trim off some as I go to make sure I have a nice clean edge. When we get to come to the end, we can surge right off, and then we have our chain started before our next piece. In an ideal surge, your looper threads, which in this case are the red and the blue, will meet neatly at the edge of your fabric. Your needle threads go up and down to hold those looper threads in place. And they should not be pulling at all. They should be a, just a nice tidy little dot. Um, based, based on the tension here, uh, if you are having tension issues, you only want to adjust one tension at a time. And uh, 
keep track of where you're going. So I have, I have a little bit of extra thread on my yellow there. I am going to increase the tension on my yellow just a little bit to tighten that up. And I think that'll be pretty tidy when I'm all done. I'm just going to go down the other side. Looks pretty neat. Those are still nice and tight. So now with a slight increase on our tension on the left needle, my yellow, my yellow kind of loopies are now just yellow dots, which is a much tidier tension. And we've adjusted just one tension and just a little bit. So on the front of the machine now, my basic four thread serge on this particular serger today with the threads I have and the fabric I have is a left needle tension of four, right needle tension five, left needle tension of five, right needle tension of four, uh, upper looper tension of four, and lower looper tension of four. So that's our basic four thread serge. Pretty easy place to start. And this stitch is uh, infinitely useful in all sorts of things. 